Hey church, hope you guys are doing well. If I have not had a chance to meet you, uh, I'm Rick Hutchinson. Me and my wife, Ellen, are the worship pastors at our West Little Rock campus. And before we jump into the Devo today, I feel like I have to clear up something. And that is, what in the world is going on in the background? Like, that's some craziness back there. So uh, something else that I do is I run a YouTube channel where I basically cover 80s and 90s nostalgia, um, you know, at basically video games, toys of that era, TV shows, and movies. So when I was approached about um, talking about a movie for this big screen uh, series Devo, uh, you know, where we take we're taking movies and how they parallel to to parables and scriptures uh, in in the Word, I knew that I had to pick a 90s movie. Right? I had to pick a 90s movie, and the movie I picked is one of my favorites of all time. It is a Steven Spielberg's Hook. And yes, guys, this is a VHS. Some of you watching this may have no idea what this even is, um, but I love everything about this movie. Uh, the storyline of redemption, uh, the score, the music, it's star-studded. You got Robin Williams, uh, Julia Roberts, so many amazing actors and actresses. I love everything about it. So I'm going to give you the shortened version of, of what's kind of happening in this movie. It is about Peter Banning, a.k.a. Peter Pan, but he doesn't know at the beginning of the movie that he's Peter Pan. He is just basically this um, successful but overworked lawyer, pretty cynical at this point. Like life has hit him really hard and his his priorities are all out of order. Uh, we can probably all, all relate to this. Uh, then one night, his kids are, are kidnapped and there's a note left by Captain James Hook. And it basically says, I've kidnapped your kids. Uh, you have to come back to Neverland to get them. Neverland is this magical place where, where basically children, they don't age. They have eternal youth. So this is where, where Peter grew up. This is where Peter Pan grew up. He lived there. He was the leader of the Lost Boys. You know, all the kids that, that never aged, he was the leader. Okay, this is where, where they grew up. They went on adventures every day. Uh, and then one day, Peter Pan leaves. He leaves and he leaves for a girl. So at this point, he does start to age, but not only does Peter Pan age, he forgets everything. Like he forgets about Neverland, about living there. He forgets about the Lost Boys. He has no, he has no recollection of being Peter Pan. So he's looking at this note and Tinkerbell comes into the room. Tinkerbell is basically um, the person that's always talking, talking Peter through things. I always think about the Holy Spirit, <laughs> honestly, when I think about Tinkerbell. We could have a whole month of how Hook relates to the Bible, right? Um, so she actually brings him back to Neverland. So he returns, he returns there, and Captain Hook is waiting for him. And what he wants in this moment is he wants to have the war of all wars against Peter Pan. But then he's talking to him, and he realizes that, that Peter Banning doesn't remember that he's Peter Pan. And he's like, what is happening? Like, this isn't even worth it. Just kill them. And Tinkerbell's like, no, give me a couple days. Give me three days to help me or to, for me to help um, Peter Banning remember that he's Peter Pan. And then you can have the war of all wars. So he does. So at this point, Tinkerbell and the Lost Boys do everything they can to help Peter just remember who he is. They're doing everything they can. And he has no recollection again. And then the moment happens. The moment happens where he remembers. He remembers that he's Peter Pan. He remembers the Lost Boys. He remembers every like little detail, all, all in a moment. He starts flying like through the clouds over the Lost Boys, and they're all like chanting like "Pants back, pants back." One of my favorite parts of the movie. He remembers who he is. He remembers at that point that he has the power and the authority to defeat Captain Hook, to defeat his enemy, right? So here's how, here's how this all relates, I feel like, to our walk with God. I think a lot of times we're confident. We know who we are. We know we belong to God, that he is, that, that we are his. And then, and then we forget. Then life happens. I, I feel like this is one of those things, one of those characteristics that Christians really struggle with, that we have short-term memory loss. We see God move in incredible ways in our lives. 
you know, his faithfulness, his goodness in our life, and then we forget, and then another, and then life happens again, and we and we forget. Uh, I have this reoccurring thing in my life. I, I've always felt like this, where uh, I see that God has me, that He's in control of my life. I forget that He's in control and He has me, and then I relearn it over and over again. Like that's just like the story of my life. Um, but I, here's what I think. Here's the learning moment in all of this. I think. I think it takes us just a moment. It can take us just a moment to remember who we are and who we belong to. And that changes everything. It changes everything. Like there is power in remembering the past and where God has been faithful in our lives. I think a lot of times we're almost taught to move forward, to move past the past, to move into the future. Um, And I think that's good. I think there's a lot to be said in that. I think it can move us past, you know, delaying where God wants to take us. But I also think there is so much power. There's so much power in remembering where we come from, who we are, who we belong to. We belong to the creator of the universe. And the longer I've been a follower of Christ, um, the more I've realized how important it is for us to have this lens over our eyes whenever a situation comes up. A, a, a tough circumstance comes up because the enemy wants us to forget who we are and who we belong to. And, you know, the, the quicker we can be aware of that, that, the enemy is, that's his tactic, the more and the quicker we can move forward in that situation with victory and confidence in the faithfulness of God, that he, that we belong to him, that he has us, uh, and that he wants the best for us. So I want to I want to read this scripture. Uh, I hope it encourages you, and it's just its just exactly that promise that we belong to God and that we are His. It's in Isaiah 43, 1 through 3. It says, Do not be afraid, for I have ran, uh, ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned up, for I am your God the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Man, I'm so encouraged by that. Hope you are as well. Hope you guys have a great day. We'll see you soon.